Hey everyone, it's Ali, and with me pushing closer and closer to 1,500 corruption, I've had quite a lot of people ask me how to actually efficiently push corruption, so I decided it would just be best to make a video covering this topic so everyone can know how to push their corruption a little bit faster. So the first thing that we should talk about today is, well, what is corruption? So corruption is a mechanic that, once it gets empowered monoliths, allows you to infinitely scale your difficulty in a given area as much as you want. This will make the monsters in a given area have more health and damage, but at the same time, you're going to be gaining more item rarity and more experience, which, if you are playing a Circle of Fortune, also means substantially more favor. That means you're incentivized to push higher corruption and make the game difficult due to the fact that it'll just simply give you more loot. Now, corruption is gained through one main mechanic, and that is going to be the boss called the Shade of Orbis. The Shade of Orbis is an encounter, which looks something like this, which you'll encounter the further and further you go away from the starting point of your given echo. The thing to mention about this is the further you go away, the more corruption the Orbis itself will give. So for example, this is the first Orbis that I encountered from the starting point of my echo. And as we can see, it's going to give me four base corruption. This one, which is a little bit further, would give me five. This one would give me 10. This one would give me 14. And finally, at the dead end, at the end of my echo, because echoes are not infinite, eventually they will all dead end into Shades of Orbis. This one is going to give me 18 corruption. As you can see, in a relatively short distance in total, I would go from gaining four corruption to gaining 18 corruption, meaning it's efficient for you to ignore the first few Orbis that you come across, just keep pushing past them, and eventually just keep going until you hit the dead end to where all of your power lead to an orbis obviously because we want to care about distance from the center that means we want to try and go in as straight of a line as possible now this line is a little bit arbitrary you can go in any direction you want for example in this round of me doing this echo web i decided to go in a diagonal direction to the left but it realistically doesn't matter if you want to go down if you want to go up left or right it really doesn't matter just pick whichever direction you prefer the other thing to mention about this is there's another mechanic that allows you to get additional corruption, and that is going to be the Gaze of Orbis. Now, the Gaze of Orbis is something that you gain every single time you go and fight the main boss in your given monolith. This is a stack that if you were to die to the Orbis when you go and fight him with this Gaze of Orbis, you would lose, meaning it's highly vital for you to not die to the Orbis when you go and actually fight them, as that could potentially just mean losing a lot of corruption. In my case here, if I were to go fight this Orbis, I'd gain 20 extra corruption from the Gaze of Orbis and 18 base corruption, meaning that Gaze of Orbis is giving me more corruption than I would have normally gotten for just fighting the Orbis. And if I were to die, I effectively lose half of the total corruption that I would gain. Now, the thing to mention about this is that this Gaze of Orbis is not linear. The first two Gaze of Orbis will give you 10 bonus corruption each, with the third one giving you 7, the fourth one giving you 5, and so on and so forth, decaying per additional stack of Gaze of Orbis you have. That means the single most efficient thing you could do in terms of pushing is to specifically get two Gaze of Orbises before fighting an Orbis to then not waste any of the corruption the Gazes would have actually given you, saving any potential additional Gazes for the next reset of your Echo. Now, there's no way for you to save your Gazes or there is no way for you to stop them from being used. When you kill Orbis, it simply uses all of the gaze they currently have to give you bonus corruption. But there is a way for us to actually get around this. So here's a perfect example of that. Currently, I am very close to getting to this Orbis, but I'm also very close to being able to kill another boss, which would give me a third gaze of Orbis. What I would do in this case is just not go and fight the boss because I can bank my stability past the 850 stability that is required to actually fight this boss. You can actually go over double this amount. So in the case of Raid of Dragons, I can go up to 1,700 stability before I cannot gain any more stability. And after fighting this Orbis, which would also give me a large boost in stability, it would give me 250 stability instantly, I would then go and fight this boss for the Gaze of Orbis and then have that Gaze of Orbis ready to go for the next Orbis I'm going to be fighting. Now, what I want to add in here is a very quick footnote on stability itself and how to actually gain it. So not only do you gain a base amount of stability for completing a given Echo, but you also gain a bonus stability for killing monsters within the Echo itself. Now, what I would highly recommend for everyone to do is to ignore the bonus stability completely. Just kill whatever monsters you see along the way to the objective and don't go out of your way killing additional monsters. You don't want to clear the whole Echo, for example. You typically will get somewhere around half of the bonus ability for just simply killing monsters along your way to the objective. With all this bonus ability, assuming you are killing enough, that means you should always have enough stability for at least two boss fights, meaning you get two Gaze of Orbises per Orbis. And if you don't, I would suggest to change your playstyle a little bit more and kill a few more monsters if you are not reaching two Gaze of Orbis before you actually reach the Orbis that you want to actually fight to gain the corruption. With all this put together, the TLDR of how to push corruption very quickly is very simple. Simply just go in a straight line in whatever direction you want to go from the start of whatever echo you're doing, and then simply just skip whatever orbises you see immediately, opting to go for the orbises that are a little bit further to gain a little bit of extra corruption. 
At the same time, make sure you're killing enough monsters in each of your areas without going overboard. You just want to focus on doing the objective in each of these echoes to fill up the bar and then fight the monolith boss before actually doing your Orbis to stack up your Gaze of Orbis, which would give you additional corruption. You do not want to go over two Gaze of Orbises as anything past that will end up losing you a little bit of potential corruption and if you were to do this efficiently and if you were to be able to do this fast you will be able to gain some around 40 to 50 corruption every 30 minutes or so meaning with a relatively fast build 80 to 100 corruption per hour is something that should be achievable now before we end this video i do want to cover one more important topic and that is going to be specifically pushing in one given region and concentrating all of your efforts there instead of spreading it out over different regions the reason for that being is that other regions have bonus corruption that they're going to gain to let them catch up to whatever your highest corruption region is very quickly. So for example, here in Black Sun, I only have 146 corruption. I didn't really touch this area much other than at the start of the season. Well, currently in Raided Dragons, I'm almost at one and a half thousand corruption. That means if I were to go do this Orbis right now, as you can see, I gain 409 bonus corruption. The game is going to give you a percent of the corruption that you have in your highest region to allow you to catch up other regions like this very quickly. This means if I were to have pushed a little bit in Black Sun and gotten this to maybe 500 corruption, then gone and pushed Raided Dragons 500 corruption and then done a little bit more in Black Sun, a little bit in Ra Raided Dragons, I've been wasting a lot of time simply due to the fact that it would have been very slow to actually accumulate all the corruption. If I simply just go and do Rain Dragons like I did in this case and then come back to Black Sun because I now want to farm Black Sun for a reason, I can immediately boost it to a very high level very quickly. I really like this system because it just allows you to then go and do other regions if you specifically focus on one region and gotten all of your corruption in that place without making it go through the grueling grind of getting all that corruption again in other regions given just how slow getting to thousands of corruption actually becomes due to it becoming slower and slower and slower the higher you push if you have any questions on anything that we covered in this video feel free to leave a comment in the comments below and i'll be more than happy to help you as soon as i can i also stream on twitch every single day and i'll be more than happy to help you there as well to answer any of your questions live if you simply just want to come by and be a part of our community i'd be more than happy to see you there as well and with all that said i hope you cuties enjoy the rest of the day and i'll see you all in the next video